Hello, I'm Dickie Arbiter in London. And I'm Victoria Arbiter in New York, and you're watching Royal Report. While I haven't spoken to Prince William in recent days, I do hope that he is still basking in the tremendous success of the third Earthshot ceremony, which recently took place in Singapore. It was the first time he executed an Earthshot week, but it gave him ample opportunity to meet with local leaders, young people, the expat community, and also to promote United for Wildlife, another organization which he founded, that was back in 2014, which is seeking to really bring conservationists together in order to tackle illegal wildlife crime. Singapore was a tremendous success, but we know from the visit to Singapore that Earthshot is proving success already and we're only three years in. This will give you just a small idea of what William, along with these brilliant minds from all over the world, have been able to achieve. In the first year alone, people that have won or certainly are part of the finalist group have managed to directly impact positively 1.5 million people, protect 2.1 billion hectares of oceans and upscale 35,000 tons of waste. They've also protected 7,000 hectares of land. This is a remarkable achievement and it speaks to William's desire to combat global pessimism and approach the climate change issue with optimism. And yet, Dad, even with all of this great stuff going on with Earthshot, there has been a little controversy because right at the end of the visit, he spoke to the British print media that was traveling and said that looking ahead, He's very aware that his family, the royal family, have done a brilliant job highlighting causes and raising awareness. But he wants to have more of a social impact. And as we know from following the royals for many years, you for many, 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 many years, uh, they are damned either way. So some people are applauding him for his efforts and his convening power. Others are saying it's not up to him to meddle. But if William shows up to something, people either accuse him of PR and a photo op or they say he should be doing more. So... How do you win? You don't win at all because, uh, you know, as the saying goes, damned if you do and damned if you don't. William did make and has made a conscious decision that he wants to cut back on the number of organisations he's involved with. He's made that clear that some organisations are going to suffer. Now, let's face it, a lot of these organisations depend on a royal, royal patron and a royal visit because it swells their coffers. Otherwise, how do they survive? But, you know, these people, they can't do everything. Uh, if they're expected to do everything, they'll be working seven days a week and there'll be no time for themselves. Let's face it, you know, in, in Singapore, he did 25 engagements over four days. That is a lot to ask of one person. There are those who will criticise, say, well, it's, it's not hard work. You just go swan from one place to another. You probably cut a ribbon, get a bunch of flowers, uh, make a few uh, uh, impassioned words uh, and move on. It's not as simple as that. And it is not that at all. Yes, days gone by, the royals did cut ribbons, they did get flowers, uh, they did make platitudes about an organisation uh, and then move on. But that, we've moved on since then. Uh, the late Queen moved on considerably uh, from the 1970s onwards into putting some substance into her visits. And that's what these visits are all about. The King... You can't question what he does. He, he will hit the ground running and he will do engagement after engagement because it is not just helping that organization, but it is also helping the people to understand what the organization does. It also helps the government to understand what the organization does in the event that they might make some sort of grant to that organization. So for William to come up front and say, yeah, he is going to probably focus on certain things that are important to him, like mental health, like the homeless, uh, like the environment. You can't do everything. And he wants to devote more time to the organisations that need his time than to organisations that might not quite need as much time uh, uh, as they think they need. 
it's going to be a hard act to call for him. Uh, it's going to be difficult to put it into practice, and only time will tell how he does it. But he is focusing very much on the environment, very much on climate change, very much on conservation. They are his pet hobbies. They're not hobbies. They are his, 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 his pet projects. Uh, homelessness is another project, very important to him. As Duke of Cornwall, he wants to see uh, an estate built. His father built an estate called Poundbury. It's very, you know, cute. Um, it's very twee, uh, but it does actually work. William wants to use Duchy Cornwall land to build affordable housing, affordable housing for people who cannot get onto the property ladder because accommodation is so very expensive and find some way to help them get onto that property ladder. So he's got, he's got some ideas. He needs to think them through very, very carefully. He needs the right people around him to help him think them through uh, before he actually puts them into practice. But I think there probably a lot of his organisations are worrying uh, at the moment as to what exactly he meant by, by cutting back on some of the organisations and will those organisations be them? Well, I think he's already got... I, I, I cannot see him personally cutting any of the current organizations that he's working with. But I think that his critics are missing the big picture here, because when he talks about social leadership and focusing on specific areas, the environment, climate change, that affects everybody. Whether or not you believe in climate change is another matter, but that's something that affects all of us. Homelessness has become epidemic in the UK, certainly, and if he can be successful with this, he could well establish a model that be could be copied in other countries around the world. And then you mentioned the Duchy of Cornwall. He's there, he's, he's wanting to, he says, to build actual homes, but he doesn't want to stop just there. He wants to provide mental health support and employment opportunities and internships and educational opportunities that then help people once they're on the property ladder continue. Well, surely that's all to the betterment of society as well. So I don't see Prince William's plan as a way of criticising. This is how it's been billed as some, is that he's criticising the roles that have gone before. But I think expectations change and people's view of the monarchy changes and the way to stay relevant is to satisfy society as it exists today. You've talked a lot, Dad, over the years about the monarchy's ability to adapt and evolve to suit the needs of the people in a current time. And I think that's what William is doing. He's learning from what the Duke of Edinburgh did with the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. He's learning uh, from his father through the Prince's Trust what he's been able to achieve. He's impacted well over a, a million lives with the Prince's Trust. And I think that's what William is certainly hoping to do here is, is really streamline these resources and where I think he's been particularly remarkable is in this convening power. Again, you talk a lot about soft diplomacy and the convening power of a member of the royal family. But we look at Earthshot alone, and I have to read this because it, it's just extraordinary when you think that William recognizes, I, I don't mean to sort of bring it to this base level, but I think he recognizes he's the maypole and he's bringing all the ribbons together to form the pattern. And those, you know, just for Earthshot alone, it's supported of a council made up of globally influential figures including Queen Rainier of Jordan, Kate Blanchett, Yao Ming, Sir David Attenborough. It has the backing of multiple Fortune 500 companies, prominent environmental organizations, strategic funding partners. Um, but the true genius behind Earthshot, I think, is in its execution. The official prize nominators to the expert advisory panel, the prize council nominees, past winners, they all come from myriad nations. We're talking about people all over the world. So this has become a global enterprise, which is then being covered in countries around the world, which means it's getting global recognition, which means it's having global impact. And it's quite extraordinary to think that William at his relatively young age, he's uh, obviously a, a very senior member of the royal family, one day he will be king, but uh, it's too soon to talk about his ultimate legacy. But this is a pretty good start in terms of having a global impact while managing to walk that delicate balance that requires him to remain uh, apolitical. It, it, it is uh, a pretty good start. Uh, he's just over 40. So, yeah, it is a very good start. Uh, you've got to remember that and, and ask the question, and it does beg the question, would Earthshot have happened without Prince William? No, I no, don't think it, it would. It wouldn't have happened. The royals are 
a very good catalyst at making things happen. The Prince's Trust happened because Charles started it. Uh, the environment, people are sitting up and thinking about the environment because not just he talked about it, his father talked about it. And when you get senior people like that talking about it, the, 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 the thinkers think, well, maybe they've, maybe they've got a point there. Maybe we should look at it. Uh, and it is the king has been banging on about it for 30 years, his father for, for 30 years or more. William's taken up the cudgel, and Earthshot wouldn't have happened without him as the catalyst. Yes, as you say, Victoria, there are a lot of very good people around him. There are very good organisations. It's, it's a global uh, reach, Earthshot. So, yes, he's going to gather these people, but these people wouldn't gather around him if it wasn't he doing it. If it was a government doing it, would it happen? No, it wouldn't happen. Uh, people... It wouldn't. And But this is where, Dad, to that point, I think this is where William's also been very smart. He doesn't profess to have all the answers. He's not taking credit for this. He's not uh, being grand and sort of saying, my project is achieving this. He's crediting the experts. He's bringing the experts together all under one roof, under one umbrella and that's and where adding, for me anyway the true that, genius lies yeah, and very good and adding to that he, he doesn't profess to have all the answers but the other thing is he doesn't profess to be an expert yeah he's got the experts he's learning from those experts and he's shouting out to the world what the experts are telling him finding out from himself not just from one person but canvassing opinion on various issues and this is very important and that's why he, as a catalyst in bringing all these people together, is very, very important for its success. So Earthshot, without doubt, uh, continues to rise. Even uh, Prince William said that he, it feels for him like it's getting bigger each year, that it is progressing, that it's on an upward trajectory. And I've really enjoyed his sense of optimism. A lot of people talk about climate change as all doom and gloom. And yes, there is a lot of doom and gloom, but William's trying to galvanize people in a positive fashion. And of course, people, there was criticism because he was flying to Singapore. He did fly commercially, but I think it was, it was good. A spokesperson came out and said, Prince William's not trying to tell you don't fly anywhere. It's completely unrealistic. But let's look at solutions to flying, how we offset that. Let's look at opportunities to combat, because there's, there's a way of life that we're not going to all suddenly stop doing certain things, but how can we do those things and then have a positive impact as well? And on that note, I really wanted to address United for Wildlife with you, because um, this is an organization that he set up through the Royal Foundation in 2014, and it was in response to the illegal wildlife trade, which is truly, it's monstrous, it's horrific. I think it's just behind, you know, human trafficking, arms dealing and, and weapons, uh, we've got suddenly illegal wildlife. Um, and the statistics are pretty shocking. Um, in 2018, CITES did say that uh, that there has been a, a fall in the trend in elephant poaching. Um, it's not big enough. Uh, yeah. William is certainly not responsible for that single-handedly, but I think his willingness to raise awareness of the poaching epidemic has definitely helped. Um, according, yes, so here it says, according to Tusk, the illegal wildlife trade is the forced fourth most lucrative international crime after drugs, arms and human trafficking, and it's worth as much as $20 billion a year. So this is something that clearly Prince William is not going to solve on his own. But it was announced when he was in Singapore that he has seven more governments on board with trying to fight back against this. And that's remarkable, too, that foreign governments are listening to a prince of the United Kingdom, but again, recognizing that this is a global problem. So wouldn't you say that that's a really delicate balance in terms of treading the political line and yet using his convening power for good? It is a difficult balance, treading the political line. It's quite interesting the number of governments that come on board in wanting to stop the sort of the illegal poaching. But on top of that, you've got licensed hunting. Now, where do you draw the line? Um, they will say, yes, well, you've got to hunt elephant because elephant multiply and there are too many of them. There are too many of them destroying the land and destroying the flora and fauna. Yeah, elephants do that. They move on. They destroy a bit of land. They move on somewhere else. But you, you can't, on the one hand, say, yes, you're all for stopping poaching and then issuing licenses. You, we've seen so many pictures recently of, of hunters. It doesn't matter where they come from. Um, sort of posing with a giraffe that they've shot or a lion. That's horrible. 
It, it is absolutely horrible. I've seen in the African bush, particularly in, in Zimbabwe, wounded elephant um, and uh, trackers, rangers, tracking the, the, the elephant to put it down because there is no way you can treat a wounded elephant. You can try, but it's pretty difficult. So it's all very well governments coming on board uh, to protect uh, and, uh, and, and, and attack illegal poaching. But where do you stop when it comes to, to hunting? Governments make a lot of money out of hunting because you've got to get a license for it and then you're allowed a quota. Um, sometimes the hunters will go over that quota and governments don't do anything about it because the money's already been paid. Um, there's a little bit of hypocrisy there. You've got to stop both. You've got to stop the poachers and you've got to stop the hunters because if you don't stop the poachers, there'll be uh, the wildlife will eventually disappear. Don't stop the hunters, they'll eventually disappear, but in a slower time. Um, so, but just to be clear, Dan, we're talking about the government interactions here, that this is, William is raising the profile that you're not suggesting that William's being hypocritical here. So for anyone that may be watching that may have tried to hear things with a certain agenda, that is not what is being said. Uh, I think William, by getting these governments on board, he's raising awareness of, of of the issue as a whole and hopefully it means that in time it's it's slow but there will be a change because of course as you say governments are making a lot of money but when you see statistics like this this really brings home how catastrophic the situation is at this point 10,000 rhinos have been slaughtered in the last decade in 2016 Shanghai customs officials seized more than three tons of pangolin scales that's the largest seizure in in China's history the weight equated to between 5,000 and 7,500 animals and William has previously said that if we don't stop now it's possible that there won't be an elephant or a rhino left in in the wild within 15 years which is horrific we're seeing a massive decline in giraffe and lion population as well. So again, I think this is William recognizing that he has a remarkable platform and he is using it for the betterment of uh, people from all walks of life, all backgrounds and countries around the world. He's not meddling in those countries' politics, but by getting them on board to find a solution, he's appealing to them in a positive fashion. And I think that's incredibly smart. Uh, going back to Earthshot, uh, William did tease. He said that he knows already where next year's ceremony is going to be held and indeed 2025. We have seven years left for the Earthshot Prize, but the goal really for him is to continue to uh, scale up to give these people the opportunities they need to really make a difference. And I, I've been really encouraged as well that the finalists are given access to mentors and resources and other programs to see them scale up. So even if they're not winning that million pounds, they are being uh, given the opportunities to grow as well. So William isn't just finding five winners each year. He's got 15 finalists that then are going out into the world and seeing their ideas come to fruition. And that really is quite remarkable. So um, I suppose in a way, Dad, what might be quite nice to come full circle, you've talked before about Prince Philip's, uh, David Attenborough sort of talked about how prolific he was, but Prince Philip, you said in the past, really got into bird watching when he was on Britannia uh, out on, on Royal Tour and then how his son picked up the mantle and then William was inspired to do the same. And so again, we're seeing these intergenerational interests continue to do good. Yeah, it, it's good to see that it is a generational thing that Prince Philip sort of kick-started the whole sort of business about environment. I mean, way back in the 50s, and I remember it well, he was talking about clean air and pollution and London at times, uh, what we call pea supers, where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And if you wipe your nose, it was black. I mean, the air was literally black. Uh, and he was very much involved in pushing governments to introduce the 1956 Clean Air Act. And he was very much on pollution. He was very much on conservation. He was very much on the environment. There was a speech he gave in Canada, I think it was around about 1970, uh, in which he criticised uh, the delegates. It's all very well governments talking about it, but it's no good talking about it unless you do something about it. Did they do something about it? No, because here we are in 2023. We're talking about global warming and climate change. And the the um, the pessimists will say, well, what they're doing now is too little, too late. The optimists will say, well, if they do it now, there is hope. Uh, and what William is doing is creating that hope. Fifteen finalists, uh, five finalists. Yes. Terrific. 
but the other people who've been involved are not just packing up shop and, and going away. They are continuing with their projects, which is important because Earthshot has encouraged people to come forward, young people to come forward with ideas of how to combat climate change, how to combat global warming. And it has to be done now because if it's left any longer, it'll be too late and we'll all burn up. Dad, I, I think you've given us the perfect button doing something about it. And this is the point really uh, that I'd like to close on is that there are so many armchair critics. There are so many people saying, boo William doing this and boo William saying that, but what are they actually doing about it? William has been aware of critics his whole life. I think he pays them very little mind. The proof is in the pudding and the success it is his to enjoy. And uh, the beauty of William is he's far too humble to take any of the success as a credit to himself. He will celebrate the people that have been part of this journey, whether it is United for Wildlife, Homewards, Earthshot, everything that he's doing on behalf of mental health support. I think we have a lot of really exciting things to come from Prince William and certainly I for one. I'm, I'm very glad to see someone using their platform for good and having such a positive impact on others. So stay tuned to Royal Report in the coming days, weeks and months. We'll be covering all of the developments as they happen. Make sure to click like, subscribe and ring the bell. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.